okay hello everyone and this is my youtube channel everyday lead code and this problem today is a slightly complicated one actually it's not a complicated one to people who understand backtracking um i personally am a little weak in backtracking i worked a lot in back backtracking from the last few days and uh, i want to make sure that i'm good at backtracking also so this problem is something that uh clears the basics of backtracking and you know what i realized in the last few days is that it's it's not about the number of problems that you solve in backtracking but it's it's about the logic it's about how you think behind the problem and how you approach the problem if you are approaching the problem in the right way you would surely be able to tackle this problem but talking about the problem first let's let's try to understand what the problem is uh, the problem states that letter combinations of a phone number is the name of the problem uh, it's the most liked problem on lead code as of now uh, it might be different when you are watching this video but uh, yeah it's it's the most liked video as of now um so what is the question here what what exactly is the question um so let me have something like all right i'll just create a comment section here yep i'm not doing anything here. yeah so the question is that you know you have 1 2 3 4 it's it's basically a phone pad that you have given uh, they have given you and they are giving you digits a string of digits maybe a 2 3 a 2 4 a 2 5 6 anything like that and they are asking you what are the combinations of letters that can be made using these two so what i first realize is let's look at an example before that but uh 23 so you press a 2 you press a 3 what just with 2 and 3 what kind of uh, letters can you type in a phone so it's simple you take Two, you hold that two. Two can be two will have an A first. If you place an A at the two position, uh, A, then you can check D E F. So actually, you are recursing on all the possibilities of the third letter. Then what you have is a B. Uh, so A D. a e a f so i keep a constant and i recurse and find all the all the combinations that can be made from b e and an f the next is b d b e b f so i keep b constant and i change all the combinations that can be made from the three that is d e f so b d b e and a b f similarly i have a c i can keep c constant and i can have d e and f placed there so i keep one constant i put i keep on going to the depth of the tree for d e f and all so that's how i am trying to solve this problem that's how the first thinking is but when you talk about the solution it it's it's slightly complicated to understand the recursion the call stacks everything so i want we i want to go and walk through an example this time because it's a little uh, complicated it was little complicated for me as well to understand this is something that i've used the discuss section and got the uh, solution i've not done it myself uh, i used the discuss section i understood what the call stack would be at what different point of time and then i uh, implemented the solution myself uh, so let's look at it okay the first thing that we come is we are going to walk through an example the same example over here that is 23 2 and a 3 so you type a 2 you type a 3 what are the different possible combinations that can be made from a 2 and a 3 uh so let's walk through this okay if you uh and you are supposed to Uh, output the result so it's it's nothing but a vector of of string uh, it's an array of strings basically 
so we just initialize the result and this is the base case that we first handle that digits is actually two three in our example uh, so digits uh, in our example will take two and a three and we'll walk through this digits if the size of the digit happens to be zero then i just return the result it's just a trivial case it's a corner test case that we have to check even in an interview we should check this uh, it's a corner test case it uh, highlights your your you know it highlights your you know importance to the details the minute details that's what count uh, the string is s uh, s is just a string as of now just understand that i've initialized some string uh, there is a vector of string that is m that's like a hash map um, so for two i will store an a b c and the index three i will store a d e f and so on so i have just hard coded this uh, so m is my hash map and it's a vector of strings and at if you see at position two i have kept a abc i have kept a def at position three i have kept a ghi at position four and so on so this is just the initialization part and this really doesn't you know get me to the solution so the main solution is in the dfs part uh, this is the main solution so s is the string that i am sending uh, digits as of now I'm sending and it's a constant so I have initialized it as a constant and I send a 2 3 year 2 and a 3 year so when I send a 2 3 year I also send the position uh, initially at 0 and the rest the result vector is also empty as of now uh, so that's that's what I'm sending as of now since the position is 0 and the the size the size of the digit is two and twelve two three is there so the size is two it's not equal so i i say that we will not go into the if loop if if condition and then i'll go into the for condition uh not the for condition but the for loop uh, yeah uh, so now when i go here what i need to check is I know that the position is zero. So digits of position of zero is nothing but two. Okay. And two minus zero, I've just done it. So to make sure that uh, I am referencing to the correct uh, index, actually. Otherwise, you know, digits of position. Yeah. Anyways. So the first character, uh, the first character over here, since the position is zero, m of two m of 2 understand m of 2 what is m of 2 m of 2 is nothing but a uh, sorry d m of 2 is abc abc my bad m of 2 is abc now for every character in this particular abc uh, the first character i will have uh, the first character i put i will have in the first loop is a right so I add that to my string. So string has an A as of now. I call the DFS function. I'll, I'll just maintain a call stack also. Um, the call stack should be maintained where in the comment section. No man, not in the comment section. I should look at the code also. Uh, so I'll maintain a comment section here as well. Uh, okay, so the call stack Okay, this is the call stack I've maintained and it calls DFS, uh, S is there, digits is constant, S is as of now, yep, uh, position plus one is a one and result is there. Uh, the call stack also has DFS, uh, digits, zero and result. So I, my current call stack, the pointer would be here. Uh, the pointer is here. When the pointer is here, I go back here. Since the position is one, it's not equal to the size of the digit. Uh, I look at digits of position. Digits of position is nothing but one. Uh, so that's three. So M of 
So digits of one would be a three. So m of three, m of three. When I check, m of three is nothing but m of three is nothing but my uh, D E F. The first character in would be a D. So what I do is I just add that particular character, which is D, into my string. So my string becomes A. Of course, I passed the reference, so it's it's the same string that I'm passing every time. Um, so my string becomes a with a d okay so a d is my string okay now i call another dfs function i call another dfs function s is there digits is anyways a constant string it's it's two um, um hold on Oops. yeah oh, i had a pipe i had a timer on that Anyways, uh, then I have a result. Uh, when the size becomes two, I know that the position, when I pass that particular in the DFS, the position becomes two. That is equal to the size of the digit. So I have to push the AD. So my result will now contain AD. And I will return this. The moment I return it, I come back to this function. I pop back, I return this, so this is done. I pop back, so that D is popped out. And in the next for loop, I have the character E. So the character E goes here. The result, the result is still AD. Uh, it's, it's been pushed back. Uh, then I call the DFS, DFS with the string as AE, the digits as it is, the size as two, uh, the position as two. Since the position is equal to the size of the digit, that's the base case. I push AE here and I return this. I, I push AE. So since it's one, I come, I pop this. So AE is pushed. I pop, so the string now becomes A again. In the next for loop, the character becomes F. So in the next for loop, the character becomes F. Of course, I return this. So again, I my, my uh, pointer comes here. In the next for loop, the character becomes F. So S will become A, A as it is, plus an F. So A, F is my S. Then DFS, I have to call. I have to call the DFS such that DFS remains here, S, digits, two, and result. Since these two are equal, I add this into the result. AF is added into the result at that particular point. It will be added at this particular point and not the previous point that I really added. Okay. Now I will return this. I will return it. I return from you i return from here as well because this for loop is over i have exhausted all the possibilities for position one uh, this for loop is over i return you the moment i return here i pop the character a uh, i had s as s had a at that particular point i pop that particular character i move into the next for loop i have a b the moment the string has b dfs of s this is the call stack again digits the position now would be one so i am calling the dfs at one i will have a result vector uh, as it is so i will pass that uh, since the position is one i come here again the iteration I check if the position is equal to the size, the digit size, it's one, so it's not equal. So I do not go into this. I come here, digits of position. So since the position is one, this is M of one, uh, sorry, M of digits of one. So digits of one is a three, so M of three. So M of three is what? D, E, F again, D, E, F, the first character is D. So in the first loop, I will have a D. I will have a D. I will add it to my string. That character is added to my string. 
so the string now becomes bd since the string becomes bd i add since the string becomes bd i call a uh, dfs after that uh, s is called digit s is passed digits is two now uh, the position is two now not digits actually uh, since the position is two the digits is here the size of the digit is now equal to the position since the size is equal to the position i push back this s s is my string uh, i push it back i push so bd will come here bd will come here uh, i push back and then i return so the moment i return the call stack becomes this all right so now i am here now again the execution begins here the uh, after returning once this is returned i go into the next this thing so b the pop back will make sure that this d is removed this d is removed now i go into the next loop i check an e since it's an e i first add it into my string so it's b e so it's b e i call the dfs function again result when i call the dfs function this is two this is digits and because of this when i call the dfs function uh, what i have is i have called the dfs function the size is equal because it is the size is equal i push that string here be be i come out of this i return this so return you return and your execution starts again from here A execution starts from here s dot pop back so this particular e would be popped back now in the next loop you have an f the size becomes two again you have bf now you have exhausted all these possibilities your execution starts from here again now here the character would be c again i call the dfs function for position one uh, the size becomes two and and this keeps on happening so finally you will have a c which would be a constant in the for loop you have a d c d c e c f in this fashion in the result so this is how the example will work and this is the understanding the basic understanding behind uh doing a backtracking is that i am keeping the for loop here one thing is constant i keep on doing a a depth first search on the other side then i keep this guy constant i keep on doing the depth first search i keep the third letter constant keep on doing the depth first search and so on so that's that's the basic understanding i hope you like the video please comment like and share this video to your friends if you understand the video and yeah that's it for today